Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video we'll work on approximating the instantaneous rate of change of a function at a single point. This time however we'll use our TI-83 or 84 calculator to help us out in that process. So to find something like the instantaneous rate of change of a function, what you can do is actually uh, pick two points and then find the average rate of change between those two points, or you know, what we call the slope. Now, that won't give us the instantaneous rate of change, but if we move those points closer and closer together and repeat the process, it'll give us a good idea of what that uh, instantaneous rate of change actually is. So where we'll use the calculator uh, to help us out in this process is we can actually store our function in, we can store in the slope formula, and see what happens as we're moving one point closer and closer to the other one. This will help us determine what our limiting value is and give us a good approximation to that instantaneous uh, change of a function. To make this a little bit more concrete, let's go ahead and do it with this example problem. So here I have the function x squared minus 3x minus 4, and I'm curious, what is the instantaneous rate of change at the point 1, negative 6? So let's go ahead and grab those calculators and get started. All right, the very first part of this is we need to get our function into the calculator itself. So go ahead and press your y equals button. It's near the top here. And let's go ahead and type it in. So I have x squared minus 3x minus 4. Enter. All right. So now our function is stored into the calculator itself. And just for our naming conventions, you'll notice that it stores it under y1. That will be important for later when we're making our slope formula. So this is really our y1 function renamed. Now, the other part of this is we need to calculate uh, the slope between this point and some other mystery point. You can consider the slope formula like the difference between the y values and the difference between the x values. So I'm going to use the notation of the calculator to get a better idea of what's going on here. So our function is y1. And I'm going to figure out what is the difference between uh, the, the output of the y values over the x values. Well, I know what happens with one of my y values. That happens when I plug in a 1 into the function itself. And I'll leave the other one as x because that hasn't been determined yet. It'll be my other point that I end up choosing. And down below we'll have my x values. So this slope formula is what now I want to program into the calculator. And we'll go ahead and put that under y2. Start this off, I'll go ahead and use a pair of parentheses. And then we need to put in y1 of 1. To do that, you'll go to vars, arrow over until we get to the y variables. Make sure the first one is selected function. And select y1. So you can see now that I have parentheses y1, we'll open up another set of parentheses and put a 1 on the inside there. So what I'm telling the calculator literally is to take 1 and plug it into my function. Now let's go ahead and repeat that process. Minus, and we'll put a y1 and we'll feed x into it. So again that's under variables. Arrow over to y variables. 1 for function. And y1. Only this time we'll open up a set of parentheses and just put an x on the inside. Alright, so I used a set of parentheses when I was starting this process. Let's go ahead and put another set to close the process. That'll take care of everything on the top of my slope formula. Now divided by, let's go ahead and open up another set of parentheses for the bottom here. We'll have 1 minus x. Close parentheses. So we've programmed in this nice slope formula. We've programmed it in as y2, and now we can feed it in different values and see what we get. All right. So for the feeding in process, we need to get back to the home screen. Let's go ahead and press second quit and go back to that home screen. Perfect. All right, so the point that we are interested in is the point one, uh, negative six. And I'll choose other x values a little bit further away to see what the slope is through those. And here are some of the other x values we'll end up choosing and see what we get. So to feed in values into my slope formula now, I need to go back into variables, vars, y variables, one for function, 
and we've stored that slope formula into Y2. So I'm going to arrow down, make sure Y2 is selected, and then press Enter. All right, and it looks like the first value I'll feed it is 2. Make sure that when you feed it values that it's also encased inside parentheses. All right, so let's press Enter. It looks like we get a value of 0. So what's that really mean? It means if I choose the point at 1 and I choose the point at x equals 2 and I find the slope between them, the slope is going to be 0. So now that this is on my screen, let's go ahead and feed in 1.5. Repeat those process, so variables, y variables, function, make sure y2, open up parentheses, 1.5, enter. Okay, so now I'm getting a different one. This is negative 0 0.5. And you can repeat that process for uh, the rest of these values. Now the neat part is, if it's already on the screen like this, I can shortcut the process. I can go second, enter. And then we can change this so that I don't have to go through that variables menu and make it a little bit quicker, you know? All right, this one's at negative 0 0.9. Second, enter. So 0, 1. negative 0 0.99 and one last time let's see uh, 0 0 1 close parentheses negative 0 0.999 so you can see the calculator is quickly uh, uh, finding the value of the slope between those two points make it nice and easy on me and now all I have to do is look at these slopes and say well does it look like they're getting close to anything does it look like they're getting close to some sort of limiting value all right so let's take this away all right, for our slopes, as we get closer and closer to 1, the slopes looks like they're getting closer to negative 1. So I will say that that is my limiting value, and it's my approximation to the instantaneous change of the function uh, at that point. All right. So again, the process for this is really just choosing two points, finding the slope between those two points, and then moving them closer and closer together. And fortunately, with the help of the calculator, you can move those points closer to one another fairly simply, uh, making it nice and quick. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.